me t I don't know why the AC hasn't kicked off yet, but that's causing a lot of noise. There it goes. Alright, hopefully y'all can hear me. Be starting here soon, just gonna chill for a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, shoot them in the chat. And also, if you do have Real Flight 6.5, you can join the session with the uh, with the password up there. If you do mess around or like do anything inappropriate, I will kick you out though. So sorry, just got to do that for the sake of all things holy and you know stream worthy. Let me make sure everything's okay. If my audio needs to be adjusted, just let me know. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, I did a did a quick test earlier. That's actually pretty loud for me too. Yeah, so if you guys have trouble hearing me, just let me know and I can change the settings. If my voice needs to be louder, if the airplane needs to be louder, I can change that. It's about eight on the dot, so I'll probably be flying around goofing off for about ten minutes. And then uh, I'll go into like a tutorial kind of thing where I talk about uh, improvement, which is kind of the topic of the night. So I will just kind of be messing around for a sec and warming up. If you have any maneuvers you want to see, uh, just put them in the chat and I'll do them. Or if you have any other questions, now's the time. If not, I'll go to the YouTube comments on some of my past videos and read off there because there were a couple. But uh, yeah, let's go. Let me know if everything looks good too. I don't know why my cursor is still there. Get off. All right, you can't see now. background noise my girlfriend's making dinner so thank her for making dinner I like this plane. My setup is pretty, pretty simple though. I don't try and modify the real flight planes too much because if you get them flying too perfect, it's just there's no point because you're never gonna have an airplane that flies anything remotely like that at all. But I mean, it's getting closer though. I mean, I've seen some of the extreme flight airplanes here recently just do stuff that's pretty nuts. But like I said, it's. I'd much rather kind of practice with a harder to fly airplane than just a perfect airplane that does everything easy. Let's do some high speed stuff here. Snake. Such a good maneuver, but I don't think it's actually too usable in the competition too much just because it's like super specific. If you guys want me like to slow down this, the physics at all and do anything, I can do that too. I know it makes it easier to see, but right now it's not really about what I'm doing, so I'm 
just goofing off, waiting. Oh, I just crashed. Whoops. Thing is, like, I'm using the real flight uh, controller, which is okay, but I fly on a jetty, and the jetty has hall sensors on the gimbals. That's so ugly. I'm sorry that you had to witness that. But it has hall sensors on the gimbals, which means flying on this is like, it doesn't even feel anything remotely close to my actual radio. I've actually considered just getting a normal radio, normal gimbals, but then I'd lose my jetty and I really like that, so. Oh, that's what I get for trying to look at the screen. Cat's going crazy too. And the reason I stare that direction is because I have a screen set up over there, so I'm not like weird or anything. I actually just am staring at the screen. Let's see what time it is. Four? Okay, still got some time. Like I said, if you want to see any maneuvers, I know there are a couple of YouTube comments which I'm going to look at and kind of answer right now. One second, I'll get back to flying. I just got to find these comments. Let's see. Uh, I know one guy wanted uh, Mariano Augusto. Augustine Bas Basas. Sorry for butchering your name. But uh wanted to see some rolling harrier stuff. So I'll go into some slow mo rolling harriers right now. Real quick. Let's see. Simulation physics. Alright, so now I'm running like super slow. Just to make this process easier, let me turn around. And then when I get to a good spot, I will do this. Okay. So, with rolling harriers, I'm just going to do them to the right. Rudder. Elevator. Rudder. Elevator. Rudder, elevator, rudder, whoops, elevator. As I'm gaining altitude, I'm giving more power and really pushing the nose up with bigger inputs. And now back to the top. I'll come back down and go to the left. Oh, rudder, elevator, oh, crash. My bad, here we go. So this is to the left, rudder, elevator, Rudder, elevator, rudder, elevator, rudder, elevator. Kind of messed up there, got to hover. Come back around. So you gotta just like, it's pretty much like flying in high off the knife edge. And you go in inverted harrier. And then high off the knife edge, the belly in. And then normal harrier. So that's kind of how you can break down rolling hairs super. If you can't do all four of those super comfy, then rolling hairs are just going to be a challenge for you the whole time. But I'll do uh, a couple more. So, and when you're turning, so let's say we're turning, we're rolling right and turning to the right. So I'm going to get my inputs a little early. Rudder, or a little late actually. Elevator, rudder, elevator. Actually, miss one there, but you're you're just changing the timing up just so slightly to push that nose around. And these aren't very pretty because it's it's kind of weird, but that's how you're getting that turning. I don't know if I need to be in mode one to show anyone this as well, but like I said, that's that's rolling here, and the best way to break that down is make sure. You can harrier, inverted harrier, and then high off the knife edge with the belly in and the belly out. If you can't do all that like pretty comfortable, it's just gonna be a huge challenge. Um, I was stupid and just learned by just trying it over and over and over again. 
which I would not recommend. It builds bad habits, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about later in the tutorial is like how to practice without building bad habits and uh, the best way to practice. I'll show you guys how I've been practicing recently. But let me get back into the real world of physics. <laughs> All right. Oh. And let me reset my airplane. If you don't know how to do that, by the way, if you want to like really practice something, which I'll show off as well because I've been using it, um, you can set the plane position using the P key. Ha, ah, P key. Anyways, you hit the P key, and whenever you crash or hit reset, you start there. So it's really easy to set up. Like I'm gonna do this one maneuver, and that's it. Um, that's what I've been doing. It works. Awesome. And it's really easy to break down and like learn maneuvers from a video doing that. Like I was looking at a uh, Jace or. It was someone flying, and they did this cool thing. I wanted to know how, so I'd slow it down and also slow down my plane physics, and pretty much just go step by step by step until I got it. But anyways, we'll keep flying for now. Actually, let me see if there's any other YouTube stuff that needs to be addressed. Um, I can't pronounce his name, but he asked, "Can you please show the version of the Yak you're using?" And I will definitely do that. No problem. The version I'm doing, all I did is go to quick edit, 55 on the elevator, 37 degrees on the aileron. That's kind of a specific, but I'm pretty sure all the pros are using like 37 to 39 degrees on their real airplanes. Uh, rudder at 45 degrees, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. Power at 110. I made sure the airframe won't blow apart in real life because for some reason, real flight makes these so realistic that the airplanes will just fly apart. But other than that, I don't change anything. Um, like I said, I don't want to fly a perfect airplane because they're they don't exist. There's there's no reason to have an airplane that can do all this crazy stuff that you really can do, and I'm, it's more about stick time than anything. So so I just fly around, get back to normal physics land. Rifle rollers, which have become hugely popular and overused, really bad which I can't say too much because I used to do the same thing, still do the same thing, but it's gotten really bad. To the left, the left rifle rollers are not near as pretty. Ooh, lost it there at the end. Funnel hover, always good. And you can do them in both directions, but planes typically like um, one over the other, just depending on the torque of the engine and all that fun stuff. Oh, that was ugly. Sorry. That was also ugly. Honestly, I should just put the plane on the ground at that point, because that was so bad. Oh, whoops. Let me check the YouTube comments again, because I had a couple that were asking. And that's the main part of this is just asking questions. Um, let's see, plane settings went over that. Okay, here's a really good question by S V E N B A R D O S S seven Bardos said some discussion slash info about switching rates would be nice. When do you or the pros switch their rates? How can J C C a roll like hell if not with 3D rates. Is he even switching? Okay, this is. I want to say what I do, and I fly almost exclusively in high rates, which is stupid, but that's what I do. If I were to guess that most of the pros do the, around the same thing with a small amount of switching if they're doing like super precision oriented moves, but all rifle rollers are going to be done at high rates, mostly because you need that if if you mess up to get out. Um, I know some pilots like the pattern guys who also fly 3D, they switch their rates a lot. I mean, I've heard some guys just sit there and click high, low, high, low. Can you show how to execute the weeble wobble, please? Yes, I can do that in a sec. 
Um, I'm not too good at it though, but I'll, I'll try. Anyways, but as far as switching rates, um, it, it's really your preference. If you can learn how to fly 3D constantly switching rates, more power to you. <laughs> but I can't. I'd rather learn to be more smooth and adjust my airplane. If I were going to enter like a, a competition where I needed to do a lot of precision flying, I would probably set up a precision rate. But if I'm just flying normally, it's straight, straight high rates all the time, expo set it, whatever it needs to be. And now we'll go over the weeble wobble, and then after that, I'll start the tutorial. Okay, weeble wobble time. So now, back in the day, there's kind of a couple different ways you can do weeble wobble. There's like the rolling harrier spin, which is kind of like rolling into yourself, and then there's a weeble wobble. I'm not as good at the weeble wobble, sorry, but I will show you how it's done. And the way we're going to do this is I'm going to go back into uh, low physics speed again. And then we'll, we'll go and break it down. So let me climb to altitude. Keep climbing altitude. I'll do a stall turn and then I'll come down. Hopefully you can see it's kind of hard to do something like this. And I'll also okay. So weeble wobble is that's not high enough. So weeble wobble is kind of like on the down line. You're you're not really doing a spin. You're you're trying to push the nose of the airplane like out of the axis, I guess you could say, while also keeping it on the down line. Um, it's actually kind of tricky. And some people like them. I don't. Some people think they're ugly. So let's, let's try this right here. Hopefully you can see. If you can't, let me know. So, so you're, imagine like, actually, I'm going to go back into full speed because this, oh my gosh, cat is crazy. Okay. Let me explain this on the ground first. I think it'll be better. Okay, let me land. But as far as the weeble wobble, you kind of have to do two separate kind of motions at the same time. So you're going to be going up, and you're going to be pushing and pu pushing and pulling with the elevator, kind of like that. Which it's not the best representation, but. You're pushing and pulling with your elevator, and then while you're doing that, you're going to be also using your rudder at the same time. So you're also going to be giving inputs like this. So then you got to combine those in the right order to get the kind of weeble wobble effect. So I will attempt to do that. Um, honestly, I haven't practiced this in forever, so. Nope. I really haven't done this in a while, but let's see. See, I always try and get into a spin, the rolling harrier spin, just to show you what that looks like. The rolling harrier spin is one of these, which you see a lot of pilots do, but not a weeble wobble. See, right there. I'm so used to that timing. Sorry, I'll I'll come back to this one. I'll try one more time though. Nope. Yeah, weeble wobble, not my forte to be honest. I know that's bad because I'm like advertising tutorial stuff, but the it's it's tricky. And while you're doing those pushes and pulls with the rudder and the elevator, you're supposed to be spinning as well which it's kind of right there I don't know if that so pretty much you're rolling and then trying to add those pushes and pulls in while you're rolling kind of weird I don't really like it I think it's really ugly to be honest but uh, a lot of people like to do them so I understand let me reset my plane 
and then it's 8.18, so I'm going to start like the actual tutorial part now. But thanks for the question, I appreciate it. Alright, so before I start flying, I like to say, um, if you're trying to improve, the best way to improve is to have a plan and kind of like, not really a plan, or like you want to have a set of maneuvers you want to do almost every time. Now that changes depending on what you want to learn. If it's someone like me who knows a lot of maneuvers, then I'm going to have to change that compared to someone who's still learning, who only knows a couple, but they know where they want to go. So the, when I start practicing, I have a routine I do right now, which kind of hits all the bases for 3D flying, and uh, it's I call it like getting the rust off the sticks. Like this is the this is the kind of routine I do to try and break the rust off the sticks. So I'll walk you through the routine I've been doing, and it's really helped me. The main thing is though, when you go into a flight with a plan, rather than just saying, you know what, I'm gonna go up and do three pop tops and then fly around. Um, and that'll be my practice. You're gonna do those three pop tops and you might hit them and you're really not gonna get anything out of it except, hey, I tried three times. If you plan out your flights to really improve, you're gonna see a huge increase. It is boring though, I'm not gonna lie, doing the same flight every time is boring. I normally do that on the simulator. I don't go to the field and just say, I'm gonna do this flight unless it's like a competition thing, but I don't really do that too much, so. Like I said, step one for improving is kind of have a plan for what you want to do and where you want to go. Um, a good example is, let's say you can hover, you can't do a rolling harrier, you're kind of comfortable upright inverted, um, but you're trying to get to like the rolling harrier stage, which is where a lot of people are, and it's a hard gap to go through, like there's a skill gap. So I'll kind of go over that but I'll show you my practice flight that I do every time I come in the simulator I do this flight at least 10 times and it's exactly this flight and it makes sure as I practice the things I need to hit with the right amount so it's kind of like if you work out and only lift heavy weights one time rather than just like a bunch of volume over time so I'll show you the flight so the first thing I do is I come back around and I'll pop into a Harrier. Harrier is like the basis for 3D flying. Like, and it's funny because you can, they're, they seem low risk, but every now and then you can just do silly things in a Harrier. So the first thing I do is I upright Harrier. And I do one figure eight pattern. I do everything in a figure eight pattern just to get all the turns. I'll do two just so everyone sees. And you're not shooting for perfection here. You're shooting to kind of be consistent. So I want to start and stop, start my circles kind of the same area, stay the same height, um, but they don't have to be the prettiest thing. So I do my uh, upright harriers. Then I come in and go into a hover. Now, this is where other people's flights might change, but for mine, I start hover, then I bring the plane around and I try and lock it in with the wing in towards me. Then I lock it in with the belly in towards me. And then I lock it in with the other wing in towards me. And then I stop. So I always do that. And then I go to inverted Harrier, which it's weird. On the simulator, I feel like I'm just really bad at them. But in real life, they seem so much more smoother. I don't know, I probably just suck. But this is really bad. Like I said. And uh, I'll do two circles here just so everyone can critique how bad I am. These are a little better. But like I said, I'm just focusing on getting those circles and starting and stopping at the right point. After I do that, I come back into a hover. I try bringing it in a little bit closer to me. And then it's high alpha knife edge figure eights. This kind of goes to prepare for rolling harriers. Um, and the main thing with these is, like, you don't want to just rely on pegging the rudder one way and only using throttle. Oh my gosh. Pegging the throttle one way and, uh, oh, that's bad. I'm trying to talk and fly at the same time. It's difficult. But I'll land for this part. But. When you're doing the high alpha knife edge, don't just pin the rudder and only use throttle. 
and then don't just only use like if you only use throttle in real life you'll get in sticky situations um, I'm definitely I have a bad habit of when I'm just gonna do a high alpha rolling here I'm just gonna pin the rudder and only use throttle which works like don't get me wrong it works but it's not the best habit to build you want to be able to control using the rudder and the power setting um, that's that's an uh, I guess a tip for that when you're practicing those make sure that you use both like you want to be comfortable let's say you have a lower powered plane where you have to rely more on the rudder rather than just having all that power there so yeah okay so back to my flight so I do the Harrier roll I do the Harrier figure eights I do the hovering I do the high alpha figure eights and then I do rolling Harrier figure eights which is by far the hardest part because you have to do left and right so what I do is pretty self-explanatory. I start and I, this is kind of the line I want to end on. Roll to the right, turn to the right. Oh. Roll to the right, turn to the left. And you can already see when I roll to the left, I kick out really much farther than one way. So I need to work on that. Then I go to the left and I will probably crash here. Left, rolling to the right. Gaining altitude really bad. That's so ugly. Here, let's reset. Alright, so that direction, and then I do the turn the other direction. And then I'm done. That's all I do for 3D. Um, it's more or less just making sure I have all my areas covered. Um, as you can see, like left rolling hairs, I can do them in a straight line pretty much perfectly, but all the turning I'm just not used to doing because I never really practiced doing it. I always only did them in a straight line, which is kind of why I'm saying like when you're practicing, watch out for stuff like that because if you only practice one way, you're going to get in a situation where you need it. Um, that's kind of the improvement process but so that's my flight now that's gonna change from person to person depending on your goals the main thing I would say if you're if you're trying to level up you know break break down the maneuver so for rolling Harrier I did Harriers and high alpha knife edge if you're going for more of a hover then you're gonna to want to keep the the Harrier and inverted Harrier part you might throw in like stuff on uplines or you know stuff like that or that's when you would you know break it down by part where you hover with the belly in a lot more or you hover with the wings in a lot more now when it comes to like the really fast stuff as far as practicing precision I do the same thing kinda as well I do what I normally do is pull up the basic iMac routine and fly the basic iMac routine probably five to seven times um, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but it really is a good way to practice, especially when you read up on what's good and what's bad. Like as far as how do they downgrade a perfect stall turn rather than you know just a 3D stall turn where you're just kicking a ton of rudder. So that's what I do for precision. So I guess the main thing you can get out of this is when you're practicing, make sure you have a set goal and make sure you know what you're aiming towards. I really have found that when when I practice in the past I would just go to the field throw gas or battery in my plane and fly and I would make some progress but I mean stick time is stick time you're gonna make progress but you in the long run you're not gonna make nearly as much pro progress if I had gone out there and said okay I'm gonna do these five maneuvers for sure in this order every time all day and then after I do those five maneuvers, I'll do a crazy flight where I just mess around. On the simulator, since it is the best tool for learning, that's why I try and do this kind of flying on the simulator where I'm, my main focus is to just hit the maneuvers I need rather than just fly around in circles endlessly. Um, that's, that's how I would recommend improving. That's how you can definitely become a better pilot. Um, another thing I do for precision is I'll kind of show you how when I am practicing precision maneuvers. So let's say like four point, um, eight point rolls and slow rolls. I'm going to critique myself really hard. 
and I want to I'll show you guys how hard I critique myself because it's the very little things that separate the you know the number one guy and the number ten guy. The difference between there is so small you have to watch out for those the most tiny things. So I'll do some precision. I do I have no guarantees of how pretty this is gonna look. So I'm gonna apologize in advance for these slow rolls. And I'm gonna try and keep them close, but it's not really about how they look. Well, I'll let you know how bad they are. So I'm gonna do a four point roll here. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's the third to last roll, or one of the last rolls I drifted to the left a little. Um, just, just a hair, but it's enough, it was noticeable. So then we'll do an eight point roll, same thing. And I really should be doing it from both sides. I normally do one pass and then come back and do the exact same thing. So eight point roll, one, two, three, four, not centered, lost altitude, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so definitely wasn't centered on the field at all and the speed of all the rolls weren't exactly right. Um, definitely not a good eight point roll but this is the kind of stuff like if you're not looking for that when you fly and you're trying to improve like if you just say oh i did an eight point roll um you're never it's gonna come a lot slower like try and just it's hard you gotta be hard on yourself really um i'll do a slow roll this time and i'll do it from the other side i guarantee you this will be bad like really bad So slow roll, already drifted too far one way, kind of caught it. Altitude wasn't too hot and still drifted to the left a hair. Like that's that's uh, really what I'm looking for is when I'm practicing precision is like, not just did I hit four points in a roll, it was okay, where in those four points did I hit? Was I centered in front of me? What, or is the timing between each roll about the same? Um, that's what you gotta look for when it comes to precision stuff. It's it's hard. Like I have props to the guys who do the IMAX stuff consistently and good because it is really hard. Bill Hoppenworth, you using the real fight radio or your jetty radio for practicing? I'm using this thing, the real flight radio. I wish I could use my jetty radio. I honestly would probably get better faster if I use my jetty because the hall sensor gimbals are so much different than flying normally. Um, if there's a way to make that work, please let me know because I would love to be able to fly with my normal radio because flying on a radio like this is nothing compared to the jetty. The gimbals are just so precise, it's almost crazy. When I switched from a jetty, I was flying a Futaba 8FG switch the jetty radio I had to increase my expo to from normally around 45 to 65 because they it was just all there you weren't missing anything I don't know about any of the new radios that have been released by any other companies I haven't flown them but uh yeah it's it's an animal I really wish I could practice with it all the time that would be awesome so if anyone wants to make that I'll buy one. Or if anyone wants to show me how to make it, I'll build one. So back on the topic of improvement, um, this kind of going to be the last part of the tutorial here. I want to show you, or at least an example of what separates like the really, 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 really good guys. Number one, as in slow rolling harriers, I'm falling out as it rolls back towards me. So like rolling harriers like or like the slow rolling harriers are falling out as it rolls back towards me. Also, hey Tommy, thanks for showing up. The main thing about like the really high precision stuff is just you gotta really tune your setup, which I'm really bad about. I've always been at a let's throw 35% expo, 40 expo and just fly the plane and deal with the consequences later. Uh, that's something that was really bad. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'm more of a do as I say, not as I do, because 
But the main thing is, out of all this, make sure you're having fun. If you're not having fun, then don't listen to what I'm saying. Just fly however you want. But have fun. I think one of the best things I did for slow rolling Harriers was getting an actual pattern airplane for a while because they do track so much better than like a 3D airplane. Also flying 100cc airplanes is just so forgiving. Right now I'm only flying a 48 inch airplane so I see every little thing because it's so much harder to keep smooth. So in slow rolling here, so I'm falling out as it rolls back toward me. So is that when the circle comes back? Like, real flight has an interface for using your own transmitter. I use it with my Futaba transmitter. I know that they've done it with Futaba. I just know Jetty's like their own weird thing, and they kind of do what Jetty wants. So I'm not sure. I'll look into it though for sure. I would love that. But I'm gonna show you guys like the difference in the top ten. Like, what separates a guy who's, you know, pretty good from a guy who's outstanding? And I'm going to use rifle rolling here to, to kind of prove that. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that rifle rollers are being overused so heavily right now. Pretty much everyone's flying the same from what I've seen. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but everyone, like, I've been to a couple events this year and everyone's flying the exact same. But I can still tell who's really in control and who's not in control. So let me fly up to a height and start doing some rifle rollers and show you what separates the men from the boys. So the big maneuver I've been seeing is you'll have guys flying at, you know, 150 miles per hour. And then what they're going to do is start rolling and pushing the airplane down towards the ground and hopefully if they're good enough come out and not hit the ground like I just did. Now I'll show you kind of what I do when I'm if I were to attempt this I'll show you what I would do then I'll show you why I'm not the best and why like I'm sure Jace does this I don't see how he couldn't be this good doing what he does because he is number one right now I mean whatever he's no one can touch him. So when I'm going to do like a rolling Harrier, like a fast rifle roller, so I'm going to be rolling like this, going as fast as I can, and I normally wait. I wait until the wings are level to push my airplane, so I push down right there. I know my wings are in the right spot, I know my timing is going to be okay, I know I'm ready to do this maneuver. Now, the problem with that is I had to wait an extra split second to get my wings level to where I wanted them to push myself all the way over that split second is what separates the pros from guys like me and pretty much everyone else so I'm sure when Jace or one of the really good guys is gonna, gonna, gonna do that pushover all the way down he's gonna start rolling he's gonna be like okay I've kinda hit the the place in my field and he's gonna see okay well the maneuver I need to give is rudder and then he gives his rudder input and he could just instantly push the nose of that airplane over that is what separates the men from the boys I gotta take that extra second and I'm sure a lot of people do the same way I do is I wait for my wings to get to where I want them react and push the airplane over whereas the pros they say you know what I'm at the perfect spot and I'm ready to go whether it's you're giving a left or right rudder input or down elevator or up elevator input they go that is the level that I would like to be on but that's the level you're gonna have to be on like that that's the goal is you just want to be able to see where the airplane is and just start the maneuver instead of waiting for the airplane it doesn't seem like much but that extra roll is like an, an extra second or two at that speed it's going to be ridiculous, so I'll try and show it one more time. But the main thing from this is that's how, like, small, minute things can really change, like, how your flight is seen or how smooth you can be. You know, doing that slow roll perfectly where you don't deviate in depth is the same way. So when I fly, I'm rolling. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna come down over the field, but I'm gonna wait for my wings to get to where I want them, so now I push, and now I have my timing right. It's kinda cheating. Whereas, 
some pro pilot's going to be, you know, doing rifle rollers and you say, well, I'm at the perfect spot. I'm at the perfect spot. I want to get my rudder input now. I don't care how my airplane's rolling. That That is like next level stuff. And it's so hard. Like, don't get me wrong. That, it is hard. I've never, I, I mean, I've seen it done in person. But I've seen a bunch of people just start doing that kind of stuff where it doesn't matter where in their rifle roll they're doing it. They're just over. And it's perfect. And that's kind of when you're improving and like trying to get better. Like if you break down maneuvers like that, that's that's when you're gonna get there. That's when progress will be made. So that's kind of the spiel for the tutorial tonight. I hopefully that kind of helps some people and showed showed some ideas on how you can improve. I'll just kind of summarize here. Main thing for improving one is having a plan, and also that means knowing where you are. I would definitely recommend creating a practice flight that you do in the simulator or you're doing at the field. Either way, I would definitely recommend making a practice flight. It's going to hit the things you need and you're going to get way more repetitions going into a flight with a plan. Um, that's Having a plan is huge, it really is. Jetty has it also. I'll send you the info on PM on RC groups. Thank you. Yes, I will definitely do that. Thank you so much. I'm excited to use that because I've missed, I, would, I think I would get better if I got to actually use my jetty radio on the simulator. I didn't know they do that though, that's pretty cool. Anyways, but yeah, having a plan for how you wanna get better, number one way to get better. There's no secret other than, you know, you can know how to do the maneuver, but if you're not practicing enough in the right volume in the right way, um, good luck. Now, one thing that is, you know, creating bad habits is something that I'm really bad about. So I've created a bunch of bad habits. Like, my flying is full of it. You know, I know when for a while the big thing was who can do rolling harriers the lowest so what I would do is I get on the simulator and I would just try and drag the crap out of my wings going sh in a straight line up and down the runway and I got good at that but when it came to turning I hadn't practiced turning in weeks because I was just more concerned about going in a straight line down the runway um, keep that in mind when you're practicing and doing anything so if you're gonna practice a slow roll practice from the right to left and left to right and rolling right and rolling left if you leave one of those out you're gonna get in trouble trust me you're gonna get in a lot of trouble you're gonna say oh I can do this and you're gonna be like no I can't definitely if you like when you're planning your practice plan to not have any bad habits that's probably the best summary about that um, because they will catch up with you that's what I'm trying to relearn some stuff I'm trying to break bad habits and when I fly be more thorough but you know that's part of the plan it'll take some time okay I'm tired of flying at 25% though I will tell you that I know one thing couple people in RC group said they wanted to see this is a shout out to uh, the guy who actually hooked me up with this radio kind of helped me out sold it to me for really cheap uh, I know he was looking to do looking at inverted pop tops and exiting in a spin so I want to do a couple of those it's really not that bad I actually totally forgot inverted pop tops existed until he messaged me or until he posted on RC groups I was like oh yeah I forgot that's a thing and they're really cool, honestly, kind of cooler than uh, normal pop tops. Just kind of roll that elevator input, and you're in a spin. Do it again. Inverted pop top into a spin. to pop top into a spin. Those are just really nice. I really like that maneuver. 
probably wouldn't do like well in any competition these days. And competitive flying right now could be a whole other video because competitive flying is dead. It's dead. You can quote me. It's so dead. No one cares anymore about competitive flying except for like 20 people. It's kind of sad actually. Except for drone racing. Drone racing is cool, but yeah, it's it's dead. Yeah, so I think that's all the major things I wanted to hit tonight. Let me check the YouTube comments real quick and see if I missed anything. No, nothing too crazy. Yep, looks like I got all those. Hopefully one day I'll get Real Flight 7.5, which more people have. But uh, I don't want to spend the money on that right now. Let's see. Anything else? Let me check this real quick. Oh, knife edge spin. I know a guy on RC Groups wanted to see some knife edge spins. Let me read what he had to say just to make sure I get what he wanted. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Let me go back. It wasn't in that thread. Sorry for not paying attention to the stream right now. Might have been... Yeah, here we go. It's in this thread. He said, if I suggest one topic, it would be knife edge spin. This is my favorite maneuver to do at least once one every single flight. I've tried many different techniques with different planes and found that some will enter and lock in really easy to enter the maneuver and others are quite difficult and there will a few planes which I was never able to do it with. After many attempts I'm starting to get the feeling of the required inputs and even the CG influence on these inputs. It would be cool to discuss that too. Okay. Knife edge spins. That is very true that some planes like it and some planes don't. For example, my 104 inch slick like to do knife edge spins, but every now and then it just it just wouldn't hit. And now obviously that is pilot error in the end, that is pilot error, but I know there are some planes which you're always gonna get that perfect knife edge spin. Um, the 104 slick was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was probably the best. I haven't flown any of the new extreme flight airplanes, so I can't really say what airplanes nowadays can do better or worse. Um, Sorry, but I can't. I'm not going to speak for something I haven't flown. Um, but as far as entering them, the main thing I guess I would say, your CG is going to have some to do with it. You're going to probably, I always fly slightly nose heavy. you still be okay slightly nose heavy. Now a neutral CG would probably, would definitely probably enter it better. Um, but I don't think it's really worth it. I mean, just to do a knife edge spin to mess with the CG and give up how smooth your airplane can fly at a slightly forward CG. Uh, not really worth it to me. Um, I'll show you a couple ways I enter it, and then uh, I'll also show you some different like versions you can do with the knife edge spin. I know nowadays everyone's got enough power to do like an upline knife edge spin or like a 45 degree knife edge spin. That's pretty much all the same thing. You're still doing a knife edge spin. I'll show you the ones I like. I don't really have an airplane right now that can do some of that stuff, so. But knife edge spin, I mean, I do have a tutorial on it, um, I think. I don't remember. But you always have your downline. I'm going to crash, by the way. So you can do it on the downline, um, which is by far the most easy way. You can do it from a spin. Which that wasn't the biggest spin, but you can do it from a spin. Um, you can actually do it while most knife edge spins you'll do while using down elevator. So you're pushing the elevator, which is the best way to do it, don't get me wrong. They, the planes like to do them that way, but you can also do it pulling. They look kind of stupid though. So you can pull knife edge spin. Which is, it's, it's just the same input except with pulling elevators. Some airplanes like it, some don't, but I mean, the main thing about it is, you know, you can experiment, you know, 
I guess if you were going to experiment with doing them, I, I can't say this for sure. I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. You know, you can do like a couple actual rolls and then go into the knife edge spin, which I know I've seen a couple videos like the pros doing stuff like that where you'll, you know, kind of do five or six rolls, then like jump into the knife edge spin really hard. Um, it just depends. Hopefully that might answer some question. If you're playing with CG, maybe try more neutral, but I don't, I don't think it's worth it. Slightly nose heavy is the way to go, man. Like by far. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything in that one? Yeah, and the plane. I mean, you're gonna have some planes that do better. I know from what I've seen, the Extreme Flight MXS looks pretty darn good. Um, I don't think some of the bigger edges out there are doing the best. Um, like the really big ones, like the 150cc edges, like I've seen from PAU and uh, Pilot, they don't do them as well. But I haven't seen it. That doesn't mean it can't be done. But that kind of covers everything I saw in RC groups that people maybe wanted to see. And that does cover everything in the YouTube comments. And it is 8.49, so right on time. Doing pretty good on time. So yeah, so if anyone wants to see any maneuvers specifically, just post in chat or message me somehow. Um, I'm probably going to fly till 9, and then I'm going to do, then I'll be done. So that's kind of all I had to talk about. And I will be doing this every week. So next week I'll have a different topic and it's going to be, they're going to, all the streams are going to be more like this. Um, I do plan to make more like actual tutorial videos where I like, I pick one maneuver and do like a video on it, but I don't have a hundred CC airplane to record and I don't have the space for a hundred CC airplane at all. So, um, don't expect that for a while. I've got other plans and other videos to make. Um, actually I have some pretty cool stuff coming up soon. Um, some new airplanes you've never seen. So stay tuned for that but yeah so i'll be flying till nine so if you have any questions shoot if not i'll just be messing around and then uh, i'll be done but thanks to everyone who who showed up if you are just gonna head out now thanks for showing up and thanks for hopping in the chat i know tommy um thanks for showing up that was hopefully i answered some questions and then bill uh, i'll definitely be interested in that pm about the jetty radio I'll be looking for that because that would honestly make my life so much better. I don't know how it works, but if they figured out a way, I'm down. Um, and then I can't pronounce your name. You have a really cool name though. Um, Tantha Tantha Watt. Uh, thanks for the comment on my YouTube videos too. Um, hopefully I was able to help you out some. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed too. So I'm just gonna fly around. Uh, hopefully do something cool I am gonna what I will do probably for these last 10 minutes is there is a maneuver I've been trying to learn so I'll probably do that live so if you want to see the process of how I try to learn a maneuver um, I'll show I'll that's what I'll do for these next 10 minutes that should be pretty cool to watch for the next 10 minutes hopefully but I already know what I need to do actually I need to turn the simulation back down which ugh. but I know that a bunch of the pros out here have been doing, they're all kind of the same maneuver, but I saw a couple I really liked. So one, Daniel Holman made really famous. Uh, any experience with the AJ Laser? I have flown an AJ Laser once. It flew good, but I only flew it once and it was a buddy, so I don't really try and fly other people's airplanes super crazy. Um, because if someone did that with my airplane, I'd kill them. But I have flown an AJ Laser. I liked it, but warning, I'm, I'm not going to bash the airplane. I'm not going to compliment it right now, though. It doesn't look like a laser. Quote, quote me, doesn't look like a laser. A razor is supposed to be red and cool looking. It, it, it looks like an 89 slick from 3D Hobby Shop. That's what it looks like. That's all I'm saying. But it did fly good. Um, I didn't get that much stick time on it, but it did fly good. just doesn't look like a laser too much to me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, it just spilled water on me. Whoops. 
Okay. Let me get my plane back up to where I want. Alright, I'm going to set the home position here. Okay. So what they were doing is they would be inverted, they would do a snap, kick and rudder, and then upline like that. Which I think is really cool. But they're also, I know Daniel Holman was doing where he'd do like a snap on an upline and come out the other direction, kind of like that. I know he did that a lot. I know Jace does it a lot. I know the, you gotta resist the urge to just jam the sticks in the corner because you're normally not gonna make it around well enough. You actually kind of have to do like a legit snap, which I'm not the best at anyways. But, uh, it does take some cool maneuvers. Um, and I know when like Jace does it, he continues the roll, so he holds the a aileron input. Um, which, it looks better when you do that. Kind of kind of like that. I don't know, I saw it in a video. I think that's it. But if it's not on YouTube, you can't slow it down. Um, so, I think it was on Facebook. Which reminds me, if you do want to break down, or like, in future streams, I want to, like, I can watch videos live. So I can pull up a video where real flight normally is, and we can watch it. Um, I really want to do that and like break down like a first place flight, like what made it so good. If you're interested in that, let me know. I think it'd be cool. I already know some of the flights I want to do. Like just imagine watching who got first placed and who got second place, and then we decide like who should have won. Because I bet it'd be interesting to see like if you looked at it really hard. That that's a future stream right there. But yeah, let me get back to this maneuver. And then another one was they were going like an upline like this. And it's all the same maneuver. Like that one, I know I've seen before multiple times. You can also do it just like a normal pull. Oh, that was ugly. Didn't you gotta let the first initial snap rotate just enough? And I'm sure that like some people they do like a qu two quick snaps and then they kick it into high gear. But I just crash when I try. So, but I know that's how like some people have been doing some interesting things, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a snap to hover, pretty much. But you gotta really fight it. Another one is uh, Jace and people who have been flying the extreme flight stuff have been doing those maneuvers where they just like pretty much give full full elevator and just fly the airplane to like a super tight funnel. And it's really cool. It's also really awesome when they do it well. I love it. Um, it's really not as hard as you would think. The hardest part about it is having the guts to give opposite rudder because you have to push the nose into the ground at that power level, so you gotta be ready for that. Won the 74 Slick 580 in Knoxville, gas or electric, your option. Ooh, that's tough. If you already have the batteries, it depends. If you already have the batteries, you can make a much better case for electric, but at that size, you can fly a 30cc for like eight to 10 minutes and some people put even bigger tanks that can fly for like 20 and you're gonna have tons of power and it's gonna be awesome pros about electric though they can be super floaty I had a 72 is extra electric and I loved loved it also if you flew it gas the wings would rip off but that was a couple years ago no big deal but uh if I had to choose for me I'd pick electric because I just don't want to have gas like in my apartment and stuff but if you already have gas, like I just do like the most bone simple gas setup you possibly could and just have a ball with it and make it your practice airplane. That's what I would do. I don't know if D, DA30, DLE30 are still the thing, but that's what I do. Electric's cool, but you can fly for like 10, 12 minutes and it's just awesome. 
that's like one of the best sizes of airplanes in my opinion like the 30 cc now that they're built a little better than they were like pure fun pure fun okay two more minutes and i get to eat dinner i just got a private message on rc groups Look at the eSpirit models, Jetty, transmitter, accessories for interface cable, and you'll need a receiver and a battery. Cool. I will definitely do that. I didn't even know that was a thing. I haven't really been on the on the website. Um, I try not to go on websites because I know if I go, I'll spend the money. Like, the whole reason I have an FPV setup is because I saw one, and it was really cool. <laughs> so I got it. So I try to avoid doing that kind of stuff. But... I do hope to have like the FPV stuff figured out even more here soon. I really think it's cool. I think on 3D airplanes, racing them would be awesome. Drones are cool, but... Please some tips for rolling Harrier to the right. I can only do it to the left. Okay. I understand the pain because I was the same way except I could only roll to the right for a really long time and then there's this huge deal where everyone was like if you're good you gotta be able to roll left and to the right so then I practiced super hard rolling to the left first thing like I talked about this whole night plan so one when you're learning how to roll to the right don't don't just stop rolling to the left like you'll you'll mess it up you'll lose your timing for both and then like I said earlier, when I practice, make sure your herring, inverted herring, your inside, your uh, your high alpha knife edges are all good to go. And then if I were gonna like start practicing that stuff, here's what I would do. I would start very, I'd start in a Harrier. Hey, someone joined, Dan. Oh, it could be, I know a couple Dans. But if I were to start, I would, so you're wanting to roll to the right. So I would just do like this. Here, let me let me start over. So if I'm rolling to the right, one roll high off the knife edge, wait, one roll inverted harrier, one roll belly in high off the knife edge, one roll back to harrier. And you can do that as fast or slow as you want. It's it's the same inputs, it just gets you comfortable. And then as you're progressing, you'll be able to do it much faster. You really just want to get to that point where you can just go in between all these effortlessly. Now you'll see pros, you know, they'll be doing their rolling harriers and they'll stop at all four points and it looks cool, but really it's not that, it's the same thing as rolling harrier, you're just pause. So if you can do that, just sit there and just hit all those points, then you're just working into getting that rhythm down. I would definitely recommend if you're going to start doing the rolling harriers um i don't know if i would practice just going straight but i would pick one way you know you're going to be better so let's say you're really good at rolling doing rolling har rolling harriers to the left and turning to the left then when you start doing rolling harriers rolling to the right pick whichever direction so that might be turning right or turning left that you feel more comfortable um for me when I was doing right, when I was practicing, starting to practice rolling uh, left hand rolling harriers after rolling to the right for forever, I found it much easier to do rolling harriers while turning left as well. So I would definitely keep that in mind. I wouldn't um, just go into it and say, well, just whichever way I roll, I'm going to go. No, I would pick one kind of direction and get it and then make sure you can go straight and then work your way to the other turn. That's kind of what I would say. Um, other people might disagree, disagree, but in the end, it's all, you're gonna have to get a real airplane, go up way high and just roll, <laughs> literally just roll. But make sure you can hit all four of those points super well while rolling to the right. It's just, that's how you can kind of get comfy making that transition. And then from there, it's just the rhythm. 
It's all it is. Let's see here. Nine dollars plus receiver and battery. Ooh, that's I can I can mess with that. I'm definitely let's see. Spirit models. <laughs> so I need a receiver. Okay. I have I have spare receivers. So that's good. 903. Someone commented on my post. Gotta ask, what is XA flying? XA flying is a gimmick that people have made up to sell airplanes. That's exactly what XA flying is. Extreme aerobatics is a gimmick. Quote me on that one. Send it to whoever. It's a gimmick. People have been flying like that since the 80s. I can prove it. What version of real flight? This is 6.5. I'm not cool, and I don't have 7.5. Um, I really like 6.5. It's all I've ever wanted. I heard that the newest one, like real flight 10, is really bad. So I was kind of I don't want to get that one. But then again, I, it's hard to justify buying a brand new version of real flight 7.5 when it's already kind of outdated, which kind of stinks. Let's see, jetty interface. Jetty interface. Let's see, RC simulator. Ooh. Let me drag this over so you guys can see it. Oh, I can't. Oh, I have 7.5, but not 6.5. Yeah, I know most people have 7.5. I'll probably get it eventually, so hopefully down the road I'll have it. Ten is crap. It doesn't have multi. Really? Why would they take out multiplayer? That's like one of the coolest parts. Actually, I can't show you all this. My bad. I forgot. <laughs> I could do a display capture real quick, but whatever. That does look cool. So it just connects to... Oh, so it connects to the back of there. And... Huh. That's neat. That's so cool. No idea, but they did. That's it's kind of silly because that was kind of one of the coolest parts of real flyer. That's just hanging out with your buddies and flying. Yeah, if I get seven point five, I'll let's fly. Let's see. Someone's typing in this chat here. How do I view? Uh, how do I view the real flight chat? I forgot. Um, one second. Toggle microphone. Toggle keyboard commands. I missed it. I'm sorry. If anyone knows how to show the chat on Real Flight, that'd be cool. Oh, there it goes. Chat gadget. Enter. Oh. Hi. How do I see the ch chat, though? Tilde. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Bandit Powder Coat from RCG tuning in late. Hey, man. Do you feel Real Flight 6.5 is pretty close to real life. I can do such so much more in the sim than I can IRL. You know, yes and no. It does it is pretty realistic. Don't don't get me wrong, it's pretty realistic. But the main thing about the simulator, which if you can do a bunch of stuff in the sim and are still struggling, you can do it in real life. Like you can. Like there's no real difference. The main thing is there's more on the line in real life. You've got an airplane that you can crash, and there's wind, and you know there's those minute changes that are just gonna happen. Where in real flight simulator, they're always gonna be the same. You know, part of getting like leveling up as a pilot is just kind of taking those extra risks. You know, saying, "Okay, I'm gonna do this maneuver. I can do it." And you're going to get those moments where your chest is pounding. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm about to crash. And then you're going to do it and be like, okay, I got this. I think everyone has that moment. I've had that moment. Like when I first started, like 
when I got really good at rolling areas, I could do them probably three feet off the ground. But that like two foot to one foot to like, you know, right on the edge, you get to that point. Like, I know I can do this. I just have to push myself. Now, if you're afraid of crashing, then that's, that's part of it. And I don't think you can get mad at anyone for crashing. Like in the past, I've always been like, wow, that person crashes a lot. That that's, you don't want to do that. Now I crash every now and then that's for sure. And it's all about, Hey, I pushed myself today. I'm okay with that. Now I do do stupid stuff a lot and like try and drag the tail inverted. Rolling Harriers. Yeah. I'm still having troubles with them. Mostly steering. Steering is definitely the, the toughest part. Like, and it comes down to what I said earlier. Like when you're planning, like that's why doing those figure eights is so huge is because you get all, all the steering you're ever going to do is in that figure eight. Um, tips for steering. It's like, I, it's bad, but pick, pick one direction you're going to start. And just when I started, I did the same rolling, rolling Harrier circle to turning, or I was rolling right, turning left, just over and over again. It didn't matter if they were pretty. It didn't matter if my timing is right. I just did it over and over. Um, it's it's a lot easier to learn one way and be good one way, and then work your way back, because you can kind of bail out the other way. Um, yeah, but just keep in mind when you're going to be rolling and steering and making sure that timing. Don't build any bad habits. Fly at the right altitude if you're doing it in real life. Um, I had one thing I also was going to say. Um, and make sure you can also do straight pretty well. Um, yeah. Slowing down the simulator definitely helps some too. Like just put it on 25% and do a lap. And then put it on 50% and do a lap. Do it on 75% and do a lap. And work your way back to 100 because once once you get the mental image of what the tail inputs need to be, it'll be it'll be easier. And if you go in RC groups and look for uh, Aaron Bates, who's the KM, he has a really good like picture that kind of explains rolling harriers really well and how to change the direction. I don't have it on me. I'm sure someone can point in the right direction, but uh, it's really good, and it literally just kind of shows you the inputs delayed or should they be faster than normal but yeah it's hard number one thing from today is plan plan accordingly and if you're gonna crash plan accordingly for that too bring a trash bag okay I am about to shut her down but I will say before I go I had a look at the picture, it's pretty good, but it would be nicer if an actual aircraft overlaid on the stick inputs. That would be cool. Um, if I didn't have to go right now, I'd do some more rolling harriers, but I haven't ate dinner yet, so um, I will be streaming every Thursday. Um, for now, if people want to want more, let me know. I don't really know what people think of this so far. If you like it, let me know. I think it's cool. I like the interaction. But if you do like it, let me know. And the best way to support this is just share it. I don't run ads on anything. I could, but I don't because there's really no point. I'd much rather have 15 viewers constantly watching than a bunch of ads everywhere. How do you start to practice rifle rolls? Um, honestly, the way I did it is one day I was just at the field and I just did it. <laughs> That sounds really bad, but if I were gonna practice them, it's really tough. Like there, it's it's one of those things where if I think the best thing is get your airplane and just try, um, and you will kind of get the timing, get the feel for it. It's you know it's one of those maneuvers you can't really work your way into it. You know you can do maybe slow rolls and four point rolls and make sure you have your inverted ha your uh, normal rolling harriers down, but it's one of those things that it's kind of more just based on rep rep repetition because it's a timing thing. Um, it, there's really not that much to it. Like the inputs you have to give to do a rifle roller are so small, unless you're doing like a big push, you're just barely steering. 
which means you can get the uh, you can get the timing just right, but the finesse of making the small adjustments to your timing to like you know push the nose up, push it down to the left, to the right, that's the hard part. Start with just being able to do you know just roll and keep it you know from crashing. I mean that sounds bad, but if you can do rifle rollers and just like one big circle consistently, that's a really good start. That's where I that's where I would start, and then work your way like into a rifle rolling loop or anything like that. Um, that's where I would start if I were going to practice rifle rollers. Sorry about that. I, it sounds bad, but it's just one of those maneuvers where, like, hopefully you have the rolling harrier timing to help you. But uh, it's 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 a timing thing. It's like I don't know, like maybe dancing or something. You just you can't you can't break down. You just gotta you just gotta dance. I don't know if that was a good analogy. That was actually really bad. <laughs> But, you know, if I want to do rifle rollers, I'm just going to start by keeping it in the air and working my way. See, that was kind of bad. Like, going in a straight line isn't too bad at all. Like, you just barely have to give the inputs. Turnings, you got to be careful. So now I'm kind of delaying my inputs and make that turn. And then I can go the other way, which is a little bad. And you'll find that, like, the timing, you like if you're just a hair late, you're just gonna end up doing like a loop and you'll end up doing a rifle rolling loop. It's all about just getting just getting it down. And then when it comes to learning both directions, you're on your own because I still haven't got left rifle rollers down at all. I'm getting there, but yeah, that's how I practice them. I just I start rolling and hold on. This is definitely a good simulator practice thing, but yeah. That's how I practice those. But back on the topic, I will be streaming every Thursday. If you want to see more, let me know. I really enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed it. My next YouTube videos, um, hopefully this weekend, I'll be scouting out another cool spot to fly. Flew over the water last time. Going to up the game up even more. Um, also, I'll have a new airplane coming soon, which I'm pretty excited for. Um... I'm ready to fly something new. My old 48-inch Edge is just, it's falling apart. But, yeah, that's kind of the future. Uh, please do me a favor. If you do like this, give it a share. Tell your friends at the field if they want to learn. I will be here to help. And uh, that's it, guys. I think that's going to be enough for tonight. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out. Thanks for everyone being in the chat. If you were not in the chat, uh, you have to have a YouTube account, I'm pretty sure. But it's definitely worth it because you can just talk to me directly or hop in real flight session. Um, hop in the real flight session and uh, you can also chat with me there too. Any hint size wise? Well, I live in a one bedroom apartment, so it's not big. It's gonna it's gonna be kind of what I have, except it's it's a. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I hope it's cool. It's. I guarantee you, you're not going to guess it. That's all I'm going to say. So, look out for that. New plane, new flying site. I flew over water last time. I'm going to push it. And then, hopefully my YouTube channel will have some other kind of more variety as far as what I'm going to produce. I'll do some 3D printing stuff if you're interested in that. And I also plan to take this stream setup and also do AutoCAD stuff. So, if you're interested in like 3D modeling... I'll be doing some of that too. But for now, I'll see you guys next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for coming out. I appreciated it. It was fun. I hope you learned something. And the moral of the story is plan how you fly and you will improve fast. So that's it. I'm out, and I hope to see you guys next time. And thanks for everyone who sent me those links. I'll be flying with my jetty transmitter next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'm out.